Well, we're in the workshop for this video, and this is a special one. And there's a little bit of an explanation to go with this, so I'm not sure if you want to skip past this or not, but I think you should probably sit through it. So, today is my seventh wedding anniversary. Now, myself and my wife, we've been through a lot. There's been deaths, there's been hospital visits, there's been near deaths, there's been me with the diagnosis of MS. Lots of stuff has happened in our wedding and we've had lots of, or since our wedding, we've had lots of tragedy. In fact, the wedding itself was the catalyst for the scenario that ended up causing my brother's suicide. And my wife has come all the way over from the USA and she's pretty much um, on the route to being an Australian citizen. So we've been through a lot. So I'm finally in a position to some degree because of my multiple sclerosis. I'm in a financial position where I can make a really big extravagant um, expression of, uh, I don't like to use this word, but expression of my love for my wife, um, the way I'd actually really always tried to do. Now, this is a big secret, a massive secret, guys, so I'm sneaking away in the shed so that she doesn't hear all of this. Uh, <laughs> I've alluded to this in some of the other videos, so if you watch some of my other videos, you'll probably hear little hints of this. I've just spent $25,000 on an impulse. Something I have never, never really done before in my life, bar maybe the Argo, but I think lusting after a, a vehicle like that for nearly 20 years is probably not an impulse. In this case, I saw this going and I saw it going for a good price. Um, and it's rare, it's an opportunity and my wife's actually always expressed an interest in this. So I bought a six wheel drive Land Rover ambulance, an ex military Parenti ambulance. I've already got a four-wheel drive Parenti, if you regulars already probably know this. Uh, but we're going to have a six-wheel drive one. And it's a lot of maintenance. And um, for us to do it comfortably, it's going to be a three-day trip to get it. I've already made my plans. The money's paid. I've got this guy on the books. She doesn't know anything about it. No, but I just checked the bank. Why the hell is there 25 grand? Um, 25 grand? Yeah. Um, well, that should have been... What crazy thing are you going to buy this time? I was supposed to spend 250. Really? Yes. How did you blame this on MS, are you? Um, maybe my zero key got a bit, like, uh -huh. I'll go and chase it up and they should, uh, whoever I've sent it to, we should be able to get it refunded. Uh-huh. Um, all she knows is we're taking a bit of a romantic trip. Um, I had planned to book us into the most romantic hotel um, where we'd actually, on the route to where we'd planned to go. Um, but uh, of course, the Melburnians were released recently um, and there's no new cases. So hotels are reopened and everything is booked. So uh, we're going to have to camp this. But we, we can still do it in comfort. It's a big, look, some of you guys are probably used to spending money like that. A lot of you guys have probably never seen that much money in your life. Um, I'm sort of in between the both. Um, I've been a homeowner in the past and <laughs> have ended up signing that off to an ex-girlfriend um, in exchange to clear some other debt. So I've, I've had a lot of money through my books in the past and I've also spent a lot of time with living off 20 bucks for a, <laughs> a week's food. So I've been on both ends of this scale but I'm still really nervous. Um, I don't know how she's going to react to this. So um, we're not going to break the news to her till she sees it. We're just, we're going for a trip as far as I'm telling her. It feels very much like I'm, there's a lot of wind here today if you hear some noise. This feels very much like I'm lying to her and that's something that makes me feel sick in the stomach. But at the same time, I'm quite excited as to how she's likely to react. Um, she may even slap me. I don't know uh, how she's going to react at all. Um, I don't think she's ever had anybody do something like this for her before. It's um, not often that I get to do this kind of thing at this kind of scale. So, you know what, I'm, I'm trying hard to, to show her what she means to me. 
Um, and I don't know if this will do it, but it might. And I'm a little teary because it's an emotional day. Um, there's a bit of a taboo about guys showing emotions, I know. Uh, but there is a video back on my channel. Um, uh, I think it's called Be A Man. It's a documentary I did on, on a similar topic um, not long after I lost my brother. So you can go and I'll put the link in the description below if you want to check that one out. Um, but anyway, let's get on with the packing and preparation and hope we don't get busted and slip up. So let's get on with this. Go. All right, well, we're outside and I'm using a helmet cam um, because it's very windy and the helmet cam I've designed with a wind filter on it. So the back of this is messy and I'm going to have to sleep in here. Now, um, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I have a number five military trailer which is parked around the side. It's converted into a camper so it can be folded up. Um, we're going to be taking this one because it's a little easier to sleep in and it can take the pintle hitch. Well, the Jeep can take the pintle hitch too, but the Jeep is notoriously unreliable <laughs> gearbox wise when towing. It has overheat problems, even though I've spent five and a half grand to fix the bloody gearbox. Anyway, so we're going to take that trailer and this. That'll give us accommodation for the both of us on the way up. On the way back, we're going to attempt to sleep in the ambulance. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, um, we're probably going to ditch the trailer at the Geelong Caravan Park um, while we do the 200k round trip to pick it up and bring it back. Or it's, I think it's nearly 200k's up and 200k's back. So we're going to be doing 400k's round trip. We'll ditch the trailer for that because we're not going to need it for that segment of the trip. Um, so I've got to get all this all cleaned right, out. So I have a bit of agreement with my neighbours. We have this set of shelves here in the driveway that's readily accessible. Stuff that I don't mind getting borrowed or stolen, whatever, gets put on that shelf. So there's a selection of fluids and degreaser and bits and pieces for the lawnmower because the neighbour borrows the mower all the time. So that's a sort of communal area. The problem is I can't get to that because I parked too close to the door. So, I'm going to have to move this back and I hope I've got enough room here. I may have to move that out again. Um, actually, I am going to have to move both vehicles because I think I'm leaving to help out a blind bloke from the museum with this thing today. So let's just roll this back a little bit. Let's see if we've got enough room still. Yep, I can still get the tailgate down. Wow, this storm wind has blown everything everywhere around here. There's so much trees and junk and I think our bin tipped over in the wind yesterday. So I'm going to have to come and fish half of this out. Anyway, what I'm looking for are these two. What have we got here? So, that is gear oil. That's ADW90 gear oil. There's a little bit in there. I'll top that up. And that is engine oil. It's 15W40 and it's Castrol GTX. All of that stuff I think is all empty oils. What is this? This is ADW90. That's empty. That is ADW90 gear oil in that. Um, so that's almost... Well, it's the same viscosity. So I know this is a different brand in here, but... For gear oil, it's probably better than what's already in the diff. If the dry flange is leaking, um, then we've probably already got some issues. Yeah, so that would have been what's in that other Tom Thumb pump, is this blue gear oil. So I think I'll take that other pump with me um, for gear oil, because I am definitely going to pop at least one of the diff drain plugs out and um, change the oil or at least top it up for the trip because there's nothing like doing a thousand k's on a bloody diff with no bloody oil in it oh wrong cap Ugh. i am not suited to filming talking and doing tasks at the same time right so we're hiding away in the workshop here now, this orange toolbox here and i hope you're in frame is my land rover toolkit Every time I've needed a particular tool for the Land Rover, I've gone and purchased it or a quality socket and it lives in here. 
along with a few other things that live in the rover. I think I've got some one-shot grease in here as well. I've got gasket maker, which is good. I will probably need some of that um, to seal the hubcaps on, just so they don't pop off on the road. I have a brand new um, genuine hubcap. Well, that's an aftermarket one, but that's all right. Um, I've got now the hubs because the bloke has just informed me that one of the hubs are leaking. Um, I'm going to have to change that. So I've got a couple of dry flanges I'll take with me um, off my 4x4 and they have hubcaps on them. Um, and I have some heavy duty dry flanges here with threaded hubcaps. I might replace the... I've done the front ones on my 4x4. I might replace these for the rear ones. And I should have nearly six dry flanges to take with me. Yes, there's an extra dry flange in here. Um, I think one will be enough to get me out of trouble. Because um, anything else I can just engage the center diff lock and drive it home and just have freewheeling hubs. I can take dry flanges off if it's a problem. Um, what have I got here? I've got service parts. I've got a uh, wheel cylinder. Oh, that's brake cylinder. So I've got new brakes for the rears. Well, the disc brakes on the other one this is this is my shelf full of Land Rover parts so I'm going to check so I've got bushes um, no the bushes have all been replaced on it so that's handy now what else have we got that's my number five trailer light we won't be needing that um, that is gearbox gasket kit um, I have a hu I've got a whole new clutch and a whole bunch of gearbox parts in here somewhere but they're too heavy to store on this shelf what was this box? This is uh, brake cylinders for the drum brakes. Not useful for the six-wheeler. Um, Alright, so what else do we need? We've got oil, I believe. Let's have a look. We've got 5W30. No, that's engine oil. Should have some 80W90 gear oil, otherwise I'm going to have to pick some up. Oh, where are we? Brand new bottle of gear oil. Awesome. That can come with. All right, so we're back out with a few more things. I've rescued my kidney cups and they are gonna go into my ration pack or my uh, webbing kit up there. Um, and I've got the jar of ration packs here, or bucket. My wording goes a little bit out the window when I'm trying to do stuff on the fly. Um, in here we've got um, seven ration packs and a bunch of flameless ration heaters and a bunch of leftovers from other ones. All the condiments we haven't used. My wife loves these ration packs apparently and loves the tomato soup particularly so I've got a couple of extras of those. I've got um, some more of the muesli with milk powder which is nice. And there's seven 24 hour hunger buster rat packs in there with the wet meals and I think there's even a spare beef casserole in here. But she really likes the chili con carne. So that is going in. Like we're going to be driving past places that sell food. But, you know, if we get really tired, don't want to do anything, or we end up stuck on the side of the road for a while, um, which we shouldn't really with two vehicles. We'll have the ability to um, go and get help in the other vehicle, I would hope. Um, but, you know, me being the eternal prep artist, I've got extras for everything and some good repellent. This is 40% stuff. I do have some... 60 and 80 percent stuff somewhere so that can live in the door the front there all right well we're in the front of the rover here near the seat uh, and behind the front seat i've hidden my 4g modem so we can probably sit our camera up here maybe you guys can see from there um this is our 4g modem and i noticed the other day um, when I moved the seat to make and to adjust it for my wife, um, I tore one of these connectors off and rather than be bothered doing it myself because I hate doing FME connectors, I went back to my old uh, place of employment because uh, they do communications and I had them fix it for me. <laughs> Much to their disgust, they hate doing FMEs too. But one of these little connectors I saw, or little leads for the Wi-Fi antenna was almost eroded through. They've been rubbing on this pipe. Um, so, 
I wanted to check the state of these and make sure they're all okay. Um, and I think I might have removed the problem one, so I think that will be okay. Um, yeah, I think that will be fine. They're all connected. Let's just pull this whole bracket out for a minute and see if everything's connected. So yes, we've got our MIMO 4G, now we've got our 2.4G and our 5G uh, Wi-Fi connection. So, uh, the generation versus gigahertz is a bit of a uh, interesting thing in Australia. We've got fifth generation and fourth generation mobile phone networks, which are <laughs> nowhere near five gigahertz or four gigahertz. And then we've got 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi, which is 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So, or 5.8 gigahertz. So some people get really confused and scared about that stuff, I think. All right, so it's kind of windy out here. And of course the wind picks up as soon as I'm recording. So things might be a little bit bad audio wise. And the camera's gonna tip over. We're gonna uh, do the canvas on the trailer with this uh, waterproofing stuff. Um, should help keep some of the mold down. I have sprayed the inside of this with vinegar. Um, and it usually kills off the mold. Uh, there was a little bit of moisture in here last time I packed it up and it got left for a while. This has been out in the sun, everything's nicely dried out, so time to give it a spray with this. We'll see if we can do this without the camera falling over. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, but we'll try. So my camera fell over and uh, this is possibly the worst designed bottle I have ever seen. Um, I got it done but it's leaking out the neck and all over my hands so um, now my hands are going to be covered in PTFE and I've wasted a good part of the bottle leaking so not the greatest design of bottle but it's a good product just crap design bottle so I might even decant this into a better spray bottle to do the rest of the job um, because that's just I'm gonna I'm so dissatisfied with this I'm gonna write into them and uh, see what we can do about it anyway I'm gonna go try and wash this stuff off my hands if it will okay so it's a little bit patchy looking while it dries we're gonna wait six hours for this stuff to dry properly um, we might get that with the weather we might not I don't know Now that's 15 pumps in each side. I think that should be enough. One other little thing. This bit swivels the lunette ring. So it has a grease nipple on here as well. Put a couple of pumps into that. Feels pretty firm, but there's no bearings to push out of the way. There we go. Put a bit of grease coming out of the middle there. That's good. Perfect. All right, so we've retreated inside for a little bit and we got a GPS because it might be a good idea to see where we're going. I mean, I have one in my Land Rover, but my wife will not. So it might put her anxiety a little bit at ease if she has some verification of how accurate the Speedo is, which these Land Rover ones are not always that accurate and um, you might also want to see where she's going so we have 
a rear view camera. Now I'm assured by the current owner or I guess now previous owner because I've paid for it um, that the lighter socket on the dash in this handbell actually works which is a rarity. So I have a four-way lighter socket adapter. There is also um, some banana terminals which are actually Lucas banana terminals uh, on the dash to provide power for a uh, test light but um, I can t technically connect into those if I needed to as well but lighter sockets much more convenient and I have myself a four-way lighter socket adapter that I'm taking with me which reminds me I better write myself a reminder to take that as well but we'll do that in a minute um, let's get all this stuff out of the bag get this thing charged up put some HEMA maps on there so we can pick up all the back tracks not that we'll be taking them on the return trip and uh, we'll get this all set up okay we've got a nav man up all right no GPS yet but we can bring up a map anyway from somewhere in Sydney all right not too bad um, need to change a few settings in here um, map display we don't like the 3d um, map we want 2d map thanks map scheme why have we got Dubai map scheme all right now that I've packed everything in here so carefully I've got to take it all out because I've been charging batteries um, so no matter what you do with grease guns they always get covered in grease um, I can go there um, this one can get a big battery and the other one the chainsaw is miles away in there they can hide there for now alright I've taken the handle off the grinder so it fits in here a bit better No idea where grease gun's gonna go, but maybe there. All right, there is this on the agenda. <laughs> I think I stuck this on with zip ties a few years ago and then forgot all about it. So we might give that some adhesive to hold it in there, I think. Uh, might be sensible. Give it a bit of a clean and then, yeah, I think I might just stick that on with silicon. Uh, I think that might be the easiest way to keep it on there. Let's go find some silicon. So we're in the vehicle, it's time that we uh, took it to the hoist. So I have a bit of an agreement uh, with a fellow affiliate. I didn't have room to put a uh, hoist in my shed so I installed it in his instead. So I've got some time on the hoist. And we're gonna go and put this thing up and do some maintenance. Let's go do that. My wife's a bit suspicious now that I'm doing all this extra maintenance what would otherwise be just a nice little drive so we'll see what she finds out but I hope she doesn't come like this to her
that good. Because the antenna is going to hit the roof. <laughs> Oh, can you look one battery? Need a pan? Yeah, we might. That was a lot. <laughs> There's a lot more come out of that than I thought. Go, a bit of grease going in. Oh, that's good. Now I've got one a bit further down somewhere here. Where are we? I got a, uh, I got a cartridge fill one this time. Oh, that's right. Now, where are we? So you need to be open at the top, right where I can get it. So that's going to be your maximum spot there. There we go. That's the troublesome one I can never get to. Get back on there. Grease gun's lost prime again. What a pain in the ass. Alright, let's try this again. Get our uni joint ah, popped on properly now. Now we just squeeze gently with this because we don't want to pop the seals out of our UJ. Oh, it feels quite firm there, so there's obviously grease in there. I do keep these. Oh, come on, come off. There we go. I do keep these fairly well greased, but. Um, you know, it's worth checking once in a while. All right, now we're gonna go down to the rear. We might just spin our camera around. Yeah, here's our rear. We're going in by the rear. Now this guy can come around that way. <laughs> right. I put longer grease nipples on these too so I could get to them. Okay, so. Here's our, this is our extended grease nipple up here, but we can't get to it until it's on the top. So we're gonna do this one kind of blind. Oh. And this one is probably the worst one to do while we're on a hoist. And this is the one that gets ignored. That's why I put long nipple on it. Um, I think about there we can get it. And I'm going to have a six-wheeler to do this on. I think I'm going to be paying somebody to do this on the six-wheeler. Uh, oh. Fortunately, not much grease needed in that one. That's good. Now let's roll around and get our shaft one up here. Where are you in? This usually takes a fair bit. That's good. Uh, fresh cartridge was the trick. You find her? Oh, I've got grease all over my gutter pipe. Now, some of you might look at this long nipple here and go, hey, that's hanging out a long way. Doesn't that clash with the UJ? Um, well, it doesn't when it's under road conditions, when there's a bit of load, this all levels out. Um, but I'll tell you, this one, holy crap, does it make this easier. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in about 30,000 Ks, it hasn't broken off. So I think it's not really colliding that much. There's the crackle of our grease and it feels firm. All right. So, um, we've got our six grease nipples underneath here. Um, 
I'm no, I know there's oil in the diffs. I know my breather is good because I replaced that the other day. So diff breather is good. And uh, a, I use transparent line. There is a little bit of um, a little bit of grease. Now I might put another zip tie around there to hold that on a little better. Um, now up in the suspension here, where's my viewfinder again? Yeah, up in the suspension up in here, there's a spot where the spring has been grinding on the body. That's the sound that I've been hearing that it's, it's really concerned me. Oh, we've got the apprentice dog in, come to lick the grease off my hand. Instant regret on behalf of the dog by the hand. Look at that. All right, so I think my wife might be cottoning onto something. Been with her for seven years now. She knows me like a freaking book. Um, she may suspect something's amiss because I don't normally, well, I, I normally do checks and everything and do a bit of general maintenance before I leave, but I don't normally go to this extent. Um, and the reason I'm going to this extent is I don't want to have two broken down vehicles. If I've got one breaks down, I'd like to have the other as a means to go and get help. Um, so it's like when you're searching for a rescue victim, don't become a victim yourself. So, um, yeah, I think she's a little suspicious about the level of intensity that I'm taking towards this. So I think I need to calm it down a little bit. So, um, anyway, we're going to get this off the hoist. We're going to get it home and, uh, I'm going to find some lunch and, uh, we'll be on to day four of the plan. All right. So next phase, we've got to set the camper up. Now this is something I designed to look stock, um, but you'll see how it goes up in a minute. What we need to do is get this back into the driveway behind the Rover so we can hitch it up because there's an electric winch that makes my life a lot easier there. So uh, let's get this moved. All right, this has got to come all the way around. Take it down the footpath, might be easier. Alright Ah, uh, got grease on it, oh. That's bird crap. Wow, nasty. Oh, no, it's actually grease. Right. Right, we're hitched. And grease. I had to go find some salt oil and clean this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna try a little experiment here. I've got the chest rig on my apprentice. Who really wants to help. I hope the motion stabilization works. Anyway, I'm gonna have another GoPro running, so let's get stuck into this. Uh, don't put your thumb in front of it, you'll get in the way. Let's uh, get started unpacking this camper. Mm -hmm. All right, so we guess we have to have. Oh, what? Come on, we know the drill. We need to undo the brakes. Do you know the drill, guys? Let's try and watch. Watch David. Okay, you do the ropes on this side. So you pull them around. You do that side, I'll do the other. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Oh, uh, David. Yeah? Wait, oh, that's tricky. Yeah. Uh. You almost got it. Thank you, okay. David. Let's take the canvas off. Okay. Hi, 
Pass, hold on. Wait. One more to go. Okay. Take the canvas. I can't Take reach. It. We'll go from this side. Yeah. Just did it. There's the canvas. Good job, David. Okay. So. million subscribers will have a party. A long way from a million subscribers here. Dad, we get 50 million. No. We'll have a unicorn party. Unicorn party, you reckon? Uh-huh. All right, hang on. Because we might have it a unicorn party. Right. Ah, oh, David! Good, David. Wow. Okay, this is a temporary arrangement mm -hmm. until we get everything set up. We've got to get inside and put the bar up now. Okay, which means I need the ladder. Oh, thank you. Amazing. Can you hold that bar for me? Come here. Yep. Hold the bar. <gasps> yep, hold it. Ah. Oh. Ha. David. Okay, now I need the bar. Oh, you go. David. Okay. I'm going to point the camera in and see what I'll step down. Can you do me a favour? Yes. I need those two wooden planks. Okay. Can you bring them to me? <laughs> oh, this one of them must be heavy. Look at the in the middle. David, we're doing it. Hey, ah! Okay. There we go. All right. Yep. Oh, I'll get the other one. Chest ready, go on. You gotta you gotta keep an eye on what's going on so we can put it on the video. Whoa! Oh David! Well, right. it's dark! Yep, that's right. David! Oh, we'll open the window there. There you go! Okay. David, we'll have yeah. to add the window. Okay. okay. Now don't untie the knots, just untangle the straps. The whole thing. See? That's in the way. That's okay. This is because the thing we forgot to do last time is roll these up properly. <laughs> and this is why we're doing it now. So there's one. Yep. We need a whole bunch more of these. David. There's another one. Don't forget I might take one, two, three, stop it. Good. David. 
my walking stick to go right, three, four, five. It's called a baton. Let's stop here. We're using it to direct the marching band. It's called a baton. I'm using a marching stick. One, two, three, four, five. And when I stop here, it says stop here. I turn. One, two, three, four. Oh, five. Stop here. One, two, three, four, five. Stop here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let me show you. This type of knot, point the camera this way. <laughs> this type of knot is a prosser hitch, and it means you can slide it and it will keep its tension. So we can just slide all these up and oh. adjust them. We'll go all the way around and slide them all up. David. Okay, apprentice, now we're going to talk about the big secret with Mummy. I'm sorry. Now, we're getting a big present for Mummy, we're getting a new ambulance. Sorry that I have to record again. That's okay, you can keep recording. So, we have to get this all cleaned up. We have to change our batteries and put our mattresses in, make everything clean and warm for Mummy because she's gonna. this is going to be Mummy's bedroom for three days. <gasps> and then we can get some hot chocolate. <gasps> hot chocolate? You like the hot chocolate yeah. out of the ration packs, we'll don't you? Both, we'll have both hot chocolates. Yeah, I saved you a couple out of the ration packs. See? All right, but... Mummy's bedroom and this will be my bedroom. We can't tell Mummy, it's a big surprise, okay? You're going to be staying at Nana's for three days. <gasps> and Mummy's going to be staying in here. keep these pants. Okay. Alright, so let's go inside and find our mattresses. Okay, so I'll just wait here. Okay. <laughs> wow, guys, David is here. Alright, let's put them in now. Okay, now. I have a dory pillow that we can put in. Now, there's one corner that's got a notch that has to go to this end. Ah, there's a bed slat missing. Oh, where? Look, there's bed slats on the floor. We'll put them oh, in in a minute. No. Where's the notch in the corner? Wow, guys. David is here. All right, let's put them in now. Okay. Right. Okay, now. I have a dory pillow that we can put in. Now, there's one corner that's got a notch that has to go to this end. Ah, there's a bed slat missing. Oh, where? Wow. There's, there's bed slats on the floor. We'll oh, in no. Where's the notch in the corner? Oh, what's bed slats? Uh-oh. Yep. There's two on the floor by the door. Two on the floor. Are they... Okay. Uh, guys, can we have somebody to help? Yeah. Pull the camera up. Okay. Okay. Now. So guys. You need to move so I can put this under you. Okay. Okay, ready? Put it over the top. Oh, oh, oh there. save it. Now, we oh. haven't put, uh. we haven't put the support uh, cables in. There's straps that go top and bottom here that support everything. And here, we have we no remote. <gasps> so guys, and we won't be able to turn them on. Okay. Ah! The remote's in the bag. Huh? Okay. See, okay. we're missing that remote. And you want a pillow? Uh. There's a pillow. That's her mum's. Okay. And I will use my dory pillow up the back. <gasps> Alright, this brings us to the end of part one. This is all preparation stuff. Uh, we've got three days till D-Day. I've still got a few things to do, but they're not worth putting on film at this stage. This episode's likely long enough. Also, depending on uh, how much footage my apprentice got and how much it's useful on that chest rig, um, that was her first time using it, so it'll be interesting to see how we go. Um, it's worth noting uh, my apprentice is also autistic, so um, she's doing pretty well for six years old. Um, so yeah, so far, I don't think anybody's really the wiser, but also um, my apprentice is honest to a fault. So, <laughs> we might already get busted, we'll find out. But anyway, um, the weather looks like it's going to be pretty good. And um, we're going to have some rain on the Saturday. So that's when we do the pickup. So the option of crawling underneath the thing and greasing stuff up might not be an option until we get back to base or back to base camp. Um, but anyway, we'll see how we go. We might get away with this.